So this week's chapter of Fairy Tale, we got some crazy information dropped on us from Eileen. If you haven't read the chapter, get off this video and go read the chapter right now, because shit's about to get crazy. Eileen Belserion, Queen of the Dragons, revealed last week in last week's chapter, pretty much goes on to explain some crazy shit that went down 400 years ago. She was alive when the dragons were alive, just like Natsu and the other dragon slayers. She was there when... The dragons were trying to coexist with humans, but the civil war was still going on. Dragons versus dragons for humans against humans. She was there when all that shit was going down. And pretty much what was going down was the Dragon King Festival. Dragons versus dragons. Humans joining in to fight dragons. She was there. In the beginning of Flashback, we find out that she is the queen to the dragon of virtue, Lord Belsirion, which was a dragon that was pretty much for coexisting with humans and pretty much trying to get other dragons to join the cause even though some of them were pretty much against it and he's pretty much saying that the western uh, countries which was pretty much um, Aractasia I'm guessing where dragons are pretty much just devouring humans just like causing wrecking shit and pretty much all against the dra dragon human coexistence as more and more questions pop up Eileen is talking to Urza, Urza is trying to ask more questions Eileen's just pretty much answering vaguely and pretty much also refers something to Wendy, who was there as well, pretty much calling her the little dragon slayer. And pretty much just like, okay, so it's going to concern you and you, so just keep on listening. It concerns all of us. Now, I'll say that she's like a pioneer of magic because in the flashback, she shows her potential of shattering an iron sword with a wooden stick. Now, that could be done easily within the current fairy tale universe, within the current timeline, the present, not the past. But in the past, people were losing their fucking minds at the sight of it. Like, holy shit, how did she do that? And she pretty much goes on to explain how it was done and pretty much using enchantment, which is also a sort of magic. So, for all we know, there's some magics out there in the world that Eileen could have created or maybe held back and she still has some stuff that she's keeping within her, keeping secret, keeping on download to use against the fairy tale, Ishgar, Metallia, whatever you want to call it, to use it against them, but we'll have to wait and see on that. The highlight, the high point, the highest point of this chapter though, I mean the whole chapter was a high point, so this is the highest tip top peak of everything. Eileen is the mother of all dragon slayers. Now what I mean by that, and pretty much anyone who pretty much read the chapter, this is some pretty crazy shit, because when as she was talking to her king, Lord Basurion, who came back from a battle against the dragons that were, like I said, against a human coexistence, he was saying that they were on the verge of losing, they were vastly outnumbered, and so Eileen suggested to him, why don't you grant the power of dragons to humans? And that was something Belserion didn't exactly come to think of at the moment. It never crossed his mind. And as she's telling Wendy and Urza this, like, Wendy's the most mind blown out of it. It's like, holy shit. And that's when, like I said, she reveals that she is the mother of all Dragon Slayers. Because pretty much she is the one who proposed it. The one who got it done. And pretty much, I'm, ex I'm, I'm pretty much saying, pretty sure, she is the first Dragon Slayer. Eileen Belserion, the first Dragon Slayer. Eileen's mother is the first Dragon Slayer. Holy shit. And of course, with the creation of the first Dragon Slayers and Dragon Slayers in general, is what pretty much kickstarted the Dragon King Festival. Dragons along with humans, with Dragon Slayer magics, against dragons, against coexisting with humans. That whole shit went down and pretty much it turned the tide of the war. And so, humans with dragons against dragons with no humans, it was all said and done. Pretty much the fight was in favor of coexistence. But then, along the lines of that, something happened. The humans that were first infused with dragon slaying magic, shit started happening to them. And of course we all know that as pretty much humans becoming dragons or humans losing control of themselves. And Eileen pretty much goes on to explain that some vessels that couldn't handle it were driven to madness. That their sights and senses were pretty much going wacko and they couldn't handle it anymore. Pretty much becoming berserk in some sort of ways. And pretty much we see that herself that the dragon slayer magic started becoming more and more powerful enveloping them. She started breaking out in scales and she pretty much goes to say that she was also pregnant with Urza at the time, which is pretty crazy because you're thinking, is this a Shrek moment? Did Eileen fuck a dragon? <laughs> as, as blunt as that is, that's what I'm trying to figure out. Or did she have another male, probably, <coughs> sorry, another male, like, partner, or in a sense, maybe the dragon turned human in a way, which also leaves possibilities of something else. 
so with the rampaging madness that people are turning into dragons, now we know the dragon slayers, the original dragon slayers who were taught by dragons, had their dragons within them, which are suppressing their latent dragon abilities, pretty much keeping them in check, keeping them in human form. And Eileen is the same way. I'm guessing. That's a, that's a speculation. I'm guessing. Because she is still a human, even though we saw her break out in scale in the past. So is Belserion possibly still within her? Is that something like maybe along the lines of maybe he had she had to push out Urza because, like I said, she was pregnant with Urza at the time. So maybe she's like, okay, I want to still keep on fighting, but I don't want this child in me right now. Because if I have the child, maybe there's not enough room for the dragon. So maybe Urza was pushed aside saying, I don't need you right now. I need the dragon in me so I can still fight, which is some pretty scary shit to think about. There's also the possibility that she is maybe just maybe another Acnologia because we know Acnologia is a badass dragon motherfucking destroying shit pretty much wrecking everyone not even friendship power can fight him so he can be a dragon but also a human at the same time willingly or not willingly or not and so maybe Eileen is also keeping her latent dragon ability keeping her powers in check because she wants to use it the last time Becoming a dragon later, or using her dragon later. It's a lot of speculation right now, it's a lot of crazy theories, but we'll just have to wait and see on that, because right now, just the chapter alone was mind-blowing. And so it gets you thinking, is Dragon Slayer magic able to be inherited? Is Urza possibly as strong as she is because she is Eileen's child? And with Eileen being a Dragon Slayer, is it inheritable to their child, making Eileen, not Eileen, Urza, as strong as a dragon? As a Dragon Slayer? to be exact. And also within the chat that we got a quick look at back at Natsu again on his deathbed. And obviously Lucy stripped down and also give him some body heat. <coughs> Good job, Hiro Mashimi. You got your fan service in. You happy now? Pretty sure all the fangirls are freaking losing their minds and orgasms all over the place. But pretty much we get to go back at Natsu within his like dream state, his deathbed state, and find out that Gajil and Wendy have both appeared. I was thinking that it was Zerif just like taking on different forms so Natsu could be more accepting of his words but in a sense Gajil pretty much said it's your mind, it's your heart, you're pretty much projecting this on yourself so it's easier for you to understand the memories of your past so you can figure out what's going on with yourself. So it's not Zerif, at least I hope it's not Zerif, I not think it's Zerif, but just Natsu trying to piece things together in a way that he can possibly understand even though he's confused by himself. So. A little bit of irony there, but anyway, that's what we got with Natsu. Still waiting to find out what the hell is going on with his past. Maybe that'll be cha next chapter, but I don't think so, because next chapter is titled I Am You, You Are Me, which is pretty much Eileen's way of introducing herself to Urza when they first met. So obviously that still holds some meaning. Maybe she did some crazy stuff, mixed her and Urza's blood together, or some weird ass shit like that to keep them both humans. So we're going to get more expanded on that, because we're thinking, okay, so you're just, you're just their mother? Okay, so what's with the whole you are me, I am you crap? I mean, people were losing their minds over that. Like, really? Just just for that? Just for your mother? So, next chapter, looks like we're actually going to expand on that and pretty much show that something else is going on between them. Oh, man, this is getting crazy. This is some high-level shit. It's fairy tale loves to bring at the table every now and then just to make sure to keep your attention. I mean, it like shows that fairy tale awesomeness that there can be good storytelling within it. I mean... It's like, it's not bad, but there's times when you're just like, oh, come on, dude. So for this chapter, I got to give it an eight and a half to maybe a nine, depending on how shit goes next week. Because right now, just things are going crazy right now. Awesome stuff, awesome storytelling. Eileen's building built up so much as this awesome badass. I mean, we know she's been a badass ever since she walked up straight up to Acnology and said, you ain't shit. So hopefully we can expand on her. She doesn't get KO'd and knock a knockout sucker punch kind of deal. Hopefully she stands her ground and proves to be a force to be reckoned with, just like she has been at this moment. I mean, she's pretty much, like I said, brushed her as freaking attacks like they were nothing. She was like mocking her. So hopefully that is not just hubris and doesn't get taken down like a little bitch. Looking at you, Rockhide. But anyway, like I said, there was that. Still waiting to see stuff with Natsu. Eight and a half to nine. Fairy tale. This is the stuff I live for in the series. Anyway, this is Nigel Skur, signing out. Later.